Before we get started, I just want to share with you the inspiration of why I made this. Now, you might have seen on Facebook these posts going about with these beautiful pictures of these foxes, and I knew as soon as I seen it, this was a fake. This is a company ripping off the original artist, so I wanted to share the original artist. So after much searching, I found the Instagram of the lady that makes these wonderful sculptures. And actually her first post on Instagram is asking people if we can report this page that's falsely using her images. But if you go out, I'll link below. If you go and check her Instagram account, her work is a... So inspired by her work, I'm having a go at making a fox head pin. Now, as this is an inspiration by someone else's work, I'm just using this to enhance my skills. These are not going to be for sale. So firstly, I'm trying to make the shape. Now, this is the same way as I made the cat's head pin. So if you're making a cat's head pin and want to know how I made the blank, the, the cat, the, the blank body of the head. This is how it is. I just rolled up some fleece. This is the white corrid, carded white corridale core wool from World of Wool. And I'm thinking of a flat back. So I keep the needle perpendicular to where I want the flatness of the back to be and just stab straight up and down over the back and over the hump, over the front of the face, as you can see, I'm moving the needle to over the flowing the shape and then once I've got to this stage I notice that one bit's flatter and one bit's more pointy than the other because that's cool we want a slightly sort of squished in pear shape almost so I want the top bit to be narrower and the bo bottom flatter so I chose I just looked at it and saw which which looked more pointy and which looked more flat and I'm just exaggerating that with how I poke my needle in and also squeezing about the fleece just as I'm felting it and this is the way you make the shape so it's going to be flat back dome shape that's slightly narrower at the top and flatter at the bottom. As usual this video is shown in double time rather than the time it actually takes to make this and also there are some points where I take it away in front of the telly and smooth it off but if you don't want a totally solid fox this project will take you about half an hour to an hour slightly longer if you want to felt it as firmly as I like to felt it but just felting around all sides until this blank shape this initial shape is fairly firm and nice and smooth. If you need to, you can add more more little wisps of fleece just to smooth in any dents that you create. I would also spend a bit of time making sure that the back is quite flat and firm because if you're going to make this a brooch, then you're going to want something firm to attach the brooch back onto. You want it fairly firm, if, again, if it's going to be a brooch because it'll be attached to things, it'll be getting quite a bit of abuse. So I would say take about two hours on this project as a whole. Give yourself about two hours, but felt away until you're happy with it and it's nice and smooth. This basic shape will work for all sorts of animals, for the cat that I made last week, but also for other projects I've got coming up. I believe we'll have a raccoon and a panda, maybe a bear. Let me know what other animals you would like to see turned into a pin. So once you're reasonably happy with the shape, we're going to move on to making the ears. Now I'm using some tops, um, which is a little harder to use. So I just wanted to show you how I use this to make ears. If you were using carded bats, it's a little easier to make the shape. But basically I just take a cut piece to about the size I want the ears to be. And I fan it out slightly, pull a center piece down and bring the ends together to give you a triangle shape that's not too bulky at the top, basically. So you're just pulling one piece down. It's sort of an arrow shaped and that bottom bit that you've pulled out doesn't need to be sticking out all the way. Once you've felt it in carefully between your fingers, once you've felt it in and this is a little smooth, you can felt upwards into the body as I'm doing here to bring some of the fibers into the center of the ear. But you still wanna leave the bottom more wispy because that's what's gonna be joining into the head. But felt in a way, get that reasonably firm. And I'm just wanting, because this is gonna be a fox, I want the tips of the ears to be black. So getting a little bit of black and felting it over the top and down the sides a little bit. Now, when I'm felting this, I want to control where the bits of black are going. So although I'm felting between my fingers, I'm very carefully felting 
slightly out towards the back rather than straight down and towards the front. This means that any pe little pieces of black that I'm catching hold of with my needle are taken and they poke out the back a little rather than the front. So the back will have a blend of reds and black and the front's almost just mainly a straight line of black that you can just see poking over the tips. You'll see when I've completed with this. And it's a little fiddly, be super careful with your fingers, but I'm just holding the piece lightly between my fingers and the needle's sliding between my fingers and never actually touching my fingers. It takes a bit of practice, with this to get the feel of where your needles go in and what I would say is don't hold your needle too firmly so if you accidentally do touch your fingers you're not stabbing hard into them and again stabbing through the wool you're not using a whole lot of force so if you do accidentally touch your fingers it shouldn't actually hurt them too much but just felting away until you're happy with the shape. Here I'm, I'm not actually felting into my finger, I'm felting alongside my thumb, but just moving in all directions, just thinking of a V shape. And obviously we're going to want two ears, but let's move on to the muzzle for just now and see how I make the muzzle. And I'm just going to use this with the carded white bats that I used for the back of the head. Um, exa exactly the same stuff, carded white Corridale from World of Wool. So we'll come back and make the other ear off camera. So first things first, I'm taking a small amount of this wool and rolling it into a small tube shape. This is to give strength. I want the muzzle slightly longer than you do on a cat. Now it's going to be a cute baby fox kind of shape. So the muzzle is going to be still quite small, but just making this tube makes it a little bit easier to have a more secure, sticky out little bit of a muzzle. And then I'm taking another piece of fleece, thinning it out and finding where the middle is, popping this middle over the tube and then rolling up the edges to make to make the jowls of the fox really. And basically we're just going to felt this again into the kind of heart shape that the cat head muzzle was in but it's just going to be a little more 3d a little more poking out so it's a kind of upside down heart shape so just felt it all over um, until you're happy with the shape now if you could let me know in these tutorials what you think about having music in them for this fox i'm going to leave the music out because some people tell me the music was too loud some people say it's too quiet some people don't like the music so just no sound at all obviously i cut out the audio from the video because at double speed it sounds very bizarre um and remember with your muzzle if it's looking if you don't get the 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 muzzle site, the jowls even, you can add a tiny pinch of extra fleece just to get them nice and even and felt them till they're fairly firm. And then once you're happy with that, we're going to work on a lower jaw, which is pretty much just the same as the cat's. It's a kind of U shape where the, the top of the U or what would be the bottom of the U, but the, the jaw of the cat, the lip is more firmly felted. Um, and then we fan outwards I suppose this is what the Serafina calls a ghost shape really, but a little more pronounced at the very top. And then once we're happy with the shape of that and the bits fit together how we kind of would like, then it's time to move on to putting things together. So starting up, I've gone over this actually, I felted this a little bit firmer in front of the tally. So these are what the pieces look like when they've been firmly felted. And so the muzzle, I'm just fanning out the very end, which I just didn't felt too firmly. So it's going to be sort of narrower at the top and a slightly wider at the bottom. And I'm felting the bottom into quite low down on the fox's head and just felting it in nice and smoothly. And a little trick here to give him more of a smile, when I'm felting in, I'm felting 
this into a v-shape so the roof of his mouth goes from quite narrow at his nose and opens up into a v at the base and just felting that all round until it's nice and smooth and then popping on the lower jaw and these edges that are fanned out i'm taking them slightly above where the upper jaw where the muzzle fits onto the head so there's a slight overlap there but it's only slight and this when you open the mouth gives them a nice smiley expression you can also fill felt a little u-shape in pink to give them a little tongue if you'd like that that is super cute for the dogs when i'm making them and then the ears on in whatever position you find the cutest slightly off to the side of the head and the size of the ears is up to you we're going for quite a juvenile fox um, to make him look a little bit cuter so keeping the ears small makes him all the more cuter but if you were going for an older fox you can go for bigger ears and then i'm using six millimeter glass eyes and i'm just felting over and over again into the exact same spot to make a kind of tunnel to pop the eyes in and just like the cat the eyes are quite low down um, almost in line with the muzzle this just gives a cuter expression and just making sure that my wee tunnel that I've made um, fits the shaft of the eye there and if I was making this for sale I would dab that in a wee bit of glue first to make sure that it sticks and now we're going to add some of the colouring so the fox is going to be this ginger colour this fox red on the top and then white underneath so I've gone a strip going up from his nose up over his forehead and then a strip cutting halfway over his upper mud halfway of his upper muzzle is going to be the red and half is white so felting that across and then i'm just going to cover the whole rest of the top of the head with this lovely fox red fleece now again you could use tops or roving for this tops tops or carded bats get my terminology right either works perfectly fine i just had some of this um tops that i that i like the color of so i was just using that up basically and we're going to make slightly different eyelids a sort of easier version of eyelids for the fox than we did for the cat but equally works works perfectly well and what i'm doing just now is just giving a good covering over everything including the eyes now you want to be careful and not felt obviously right onto the eyeball but because they're glass eyes we won't scratch them or anything but just felting over the whole fox and making sure he's nice and smooth felt and um, covering out any seams or anything and you can work more at this stage you can still shape him ever so slightly so smoothing out the where the nose joins to the muzzle felting all over this until i'm happy that it's super smooth And then for the eyes, all that I'm doing is very carefully, I can feel where the eyeball is and I'm felting a straight line backwards and forwards across the center of the eyeball. So it's, you're not felting on the eyeball. I'm taking my needle from the center, sliding it to the side of the eye and felting firmly there. And this creates a kind of line. So I'm never felting on the eyeball. It's just moving the fibers out of the way until we've got this tiny, little slit of his eyelids which is actually super cute already and then all you need to do is ever so carefully and gently felt down and felt up into this line you've created just like what we did with the eyelids below to start opening up the eyelids and create the expression you want and how wide you open the eyelids again is up to you a tiny peak is really quite cute and fully open is lovely as well so i'm making the eyelids on the eyeball i'm running my needle it's not felting into the eyeball it's sliding across the eyeball and felting up into the eyelids 
and making sure to keep sculpting the top of around the eyelids around the eyeball as well what you can also do which is cute is if you felt a line above the eye in uh, that can make a kind of eyelid shape but I didn't want to do that for this fox here but he's really nearly done so spend as much time as you need to smoothing him out and firming him out but we're just going to need to make him a wee nose so a tiny pinch of black and to make a nose shape to make a triangle I pinch the fibers between two fingers and a thumb so that gives me a kind of triangle shape it's my thumb my index finger and my ring finger are really doing the most of the holding most of the time or the middle finger index finger and ring finger but if you hold them together that does make a kind of triangle shape and we're just going to pop this onto the fox with the pointy down bit of the triangle fitting into the the narrower the bum the bum bit of the heart shape i just felt in this on careful not to careful to always poke the needle into the muzzle and not out outside so there's no little black bits of fleece coming out through your beautiful ginger muzzle so felt in that on again the size of the nose tells you how gives you different ways of cuteness a tiny nose can be cute or a giant nose can make him look very young another thing i decided to do here just to show you was to add black rims to his eyelids now you don't need to i actually think in the case of this fox i would have probably been better not to have but i just take a tiny bit of black and felt it up into the eyelids and this can look really cute on some some animals especially cats look good with a with a little bit of of a rim to their eyelids but i think the fox didn't desperately needed in this case but i just wanted to show you how to do it and the other thing you can do if you want him fuzzy you can just add ginger hair all over with little whites at the bottom just exactly the same as how i added hair to the small cat's pin but i decided that this wee guy should be smooth but equally it does look rather adorable with fuzz all over it as you'll see in a minute with the final pictures And there you have it, you're done. Your fox head. And also we have the, the fuzzy fox as well. And you can see the ears are slightly curled. So there's lots of different ways to make this and he ends up being pretty cute. And if you haven't already seen, remember and check out my cat's head pin as well. And if you're interested in any other animals, let me know. And don't forget, check also check out my larger cat head sculpture as well. Thank you so much for joining me.